Here at the desk is the Carlton captain, Patrick Cripps, with us on Players' Night. Patrick, welcome back. Jared Robbo. Hello, Hello buddy. And uh, down on the farm is Tom Hawkins. Tom, congratulations and welcome back to 360. Yeah, thanks for having me. Is there a magnitude that you can instantly understand as you reach this milestone? Look, not really. I've I've had a couple of days to um, to uh, soak in uh, what has the meant the achievement meant for me. Sorry, I should say, um, but it's it's quite remarkable. I can't really um, sort of put into words sort of how much it, it means to me and my partner and, and kids and family. It's it's. I never thought I would get to this moment in my career uh, all those years ago when I first walked into the locker room. At Kidinya Park, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be special to be able to share it with um, my you know my wife now and and kids, which is uh, something that I'll hold close to me, uh, but also my friends, family, and and whole football club. I'm, I'm I can't wait. Congratulations, Tom. We were talking with Jared before uh, before you come on. I, I wondered if you were the biggest and heaviest of the guys to play 350 games, because I suspected that most of the guys. And how many is it? 20... 24. 24. Thomas, 24. And most of them are wiry. And there was a couple of guys... There's Franklin, Goods and Pavlich in this genre. In this genre. Why do you think, with your size... And I'm not saying you're fat. I'm saying <laughs> that you're big and muscly. <laughs> but a man of your size... Had, what do you put it down to that you were able to play 350 games? It's, it's OK, Rob. I've been called fat before, so I'm not too sensitive <laughs> about that. But um, I think, look, I, I'm, I'm blessed with uh, great genetics. I've certainly got to thank my mum and dad for that. Um, you know, um, I used to be able to jump uh, like my dad, or not like my dad, from genetics from my dad, and I'm sort of strong like uh, my, my grandfather on my mum's side. But um, there, there's a lot of things that have allowed me to, to play this long. I think being in an organisation that's successful and gives me the opportunity to, to play well every week and, and to play in finals is, um, is, is certainly one. Uh, I've learned a lot about myself since I walked in those doors um, 18 years ago. And, and been given a lot of advice and had a lot of people in my corner. So there's a, there's a multitude of things that's allowed me to get here. Um, but um, they're probably just a few that I think off off the top of my head. What do you think, Pat, as we get to these milestones, Travis Boak and now Tom Hawkins in consecutive weeks and what has historically been so rare, how, how much do you value longevity from peers and elders? Yeah, it's just something you look up to as, as players sort of, um, they're probably eight to ten years older than, than myself, but um, I think the more you see players reach that, um, you know, yeah. one, it's actually playing 350 games, two, it's the, the high level they play at, and I think as you get older you appreciate, you know, how much time and effort um, goes in to be able to, you know, sustain high level performance for a long time, and, um, you know, that's probably, I don't know how many years you played at Hawke, that's probably 18, 19, 20 years of footy, which a lot of discipline, a lot of sacrifice, um, but also a lot of good times along the way as well, I'm sure. Could you possibly imagine playing 300, and you're, you're a bash and crash player, I mean, your body's not made of steel, you've got to pick up some, uh, some sore spots along the way, do you, do you give any thought to, to your longevity in the game? Yeah, well, yeah, I do, it's, um, I'm about 185 now, so nearly halfway to where Hawke is, so... Um, you know, that's, that's, that, and that's, that's my 11th season now, so I'd have to play pretty consistent footy from now on and probably a lot of finals, but I um, also think, you know, playing when you win and playing footy, um, it makes footy very enjoyable and um, you know, I'm sure uh, the Geelong record's pretty pretty good, so that, that definitely helps, I reckon, recovery and, and the fun you have around the club and um, the more you can win, uh, especially later on in your career, I reckon, helps as well. So, Tom, about 10 years ago, and Chris referenced this today, is when you were having the back trouble and the position of full forward was evolving in a way that sort of demanded more mobility, did you wonder about your longevity during that phase? I think you do. Uh, you, you don't look too far ahead, or I, I certainly, from my experience, didn't look too far ahead, but that was a, a year that was a real challenge. Um, I was able to play from week to week, but wasn't able to perform at a, at a high level. And, um, you know, to bore you with uh, the point of time it was in my career, I just started to establish myself, started to be a bit more consistent, and then was hit with a, with a back injury. So, um, 
coupled that with the fact that the the full forward position was uh, was evolving into uh, less stay at home and and more of a mobile forward that could play a multiple um, position. So. Um, I, I learned to adapt. I think it certainly wasn't a sink or swim moment, but it's it's something that I think I and players have had to do each year um, to to get better, to improve. I think you're always trying to find ways in in the, in uh, trying to improve your game to ultimately help the team, um, which is which has given me uh, my longevity. It's a great question, Jared. Barry Hall once said that on this show that. He, he retired when he found out as a full forward he was leading back towards goal more than he was leading out from the goal. What did you do to ensure that when you were leading back towards goal, Tom, that you had the agility and the, and the fitness to last, to, to last four quarters of going up and down the ground? Well, I think uh, I, the, the other thing I will say on this that is that I've never lost sight of, of my strengths as a player. So I, I'm uh, by nowhere uh, means quick. I, I'm not quick. I'm probably one of the um, the least uh, fit in terms of like you know two k and, and time trial stuff. I, I I finish right out the back. So um, I, I've had to make sure there's certain parts of my game uh, which I see as my strengths. I continue to maintain. So. Um, just being for, for me, I reckon the biggest one was, was trying to get to as many cost contests as I could within our system, uh, but not overloading um, my workload. So I'm not a player that runs huge um, Ks each week. I probably would go somewhere between 12 and 13, but it's about the quality of the, the decisions that you make that, that allows you to stay fresh and, and powerful for, for what I need to do. And your work beyond 30 has been rare indeed. Um, to be able to share these moments with your family and your kids down there today, what, what does that mean to you? Yeah, that was awesome. I've always uh, watched on fondly of, of other people uh, that have find themselves in situations like this. Um, and I think it's really important to be able to share with them uh, on these milestones because ultimately, um, and you're going to find this out soon, Cripper, um, that you do need to be selfish sometimes as a father um, when you're playing elite sport. Um, and my wife does an incredible job at allowing me to uh, sleep when I, I may be tired and uh, it, to help improve my recovery and, and ultimately feel the best I possibly can. Um, she's certainly taken um, the weight of, of uh, organising on her shoulders this week. Um, which has no doubt been pretty stressful. But, um, you know, I've got a great support network uh, here at home, which then allows me to be in a great headspace to then go into the football club every day, a place that I love, um, a place that I enjoy, go and do what I do, but then leave with a smile on my face and go back to, you know, m my most important role in life and my favourite uh, role in life, and, and that's a father. In other words, you're really lazy around the house, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Am I lazy? Oh, I could get Emma if you want and we could ask her. No, look, I, I, I think I play my part, but um, I, I'm just saying at times you, you, you need to uh, make decisions that, that allow yourself to, to be able to perform at the best. So this is a phase of life you're about to embark upon, <laughs> Patrick. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I've got a week to go. So, nice. Yeah, so gather round's going to be a, wow. a, a tricky uh, tricky little time slot, so I'll get over there. So In the early days, get that interview out and say, see, you, I've got to sleep, I've got to rest. Yeah, I can't I'll, be doing anything. Just screen recorded exactly what he said <laughs> and sent it straight to mine already. So, no, nah, it's, uh, yeah, it's exciting. We um, Yeah, it's our first, so we're having a little girl in, in about a week, so it's, uh, it's all about to change for us. Which is exciting. Have you thought through the trip to Adelaide? Is yeah, it... I'm going to travel a little bit later than the team just in case, and then uh, we fly back that night after we play. So, okay. um, yeah, we're all, all prepared, but um, from everyone's advice, you can be pre as prepared as you want, but you never actually know it until it happens. So, But if it, if it c combined and connected, you're not playing, are you? No, nah, I'll, I'll definitely yes. come back for it. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was thought you were going to yeah. say. Yeah. So it, it adds a lovely layer of um, meaning to the Good Friday game for you, mm. is about to become a father, and so many of these stories, which you would have seen firsthand. Uh, with Carlton's involvement, um, parents and their and their children who are subjected to trials in life that you wouldn't wish on anyone. Yeah, well, we spoke about it this uh, yesterday. Vossi's touched on it at training, but um, a few of us were lucky enough to go to the children's hospital last week and go around and, and visit some kids and um, you know to see what they're they're going through and their families. Um, you know. 
um, to, to go and give up a bit of your time just to put a smile on their faces um, and to cheer them up. And um, the energy they still express to you is so... A lot of gratitude and thanks. And, um, you know, as, as much as, you know, we're going there to, to put a smile on their faces, we get so much back from it. It just makes you smile. And, um, you know, there's a lot of little Carlton supporters there, but, you know, every kid we walked into the dorm and, and said g'day, they were welcoming. And, um, you know, they just had a smile on their face, which is what it's all about. I know there's bigger games in footy, but this is a real special day in Victoria. I mean, the Royal Children's Hospital, the Peel, it's been going for a, a long, long time. And so you guys in North Melbourne, you're, you're actually... You're representing this great sport, football, on that day. And I, I think it's great listening to you guys when you talk about the hospital visits and what you're going to do on the day, etc. So, yeah, so it's well a, done, mate. No, nah, it's a, it's probably my, one of my favourite games to play in. And we are lucky enough, it was our first game in it last year. And um, obviously, we've had a great mate go through his own battle. So I think even seeing that firsthand gives you even greater perspective of it all as well. What did you learn about Sam Walsh today and his path back to footy? Yeah, I've probably known that for a while, Jared. Yeah. But um, no, nah, he's been going really well. So um, he's got the spring in his step again. He's, he's definitely building the right way. So he'll be two, two or three weeks away, which I'm pretty keen to get him back. So. Real or overreaction? Do you think the media were writing him off too oh, soon? There's definitely a, a little bit of an overreaction everywhere, Robo. But um, nah, that's just that's the, the nature of the game, isn't it? So. It's a tough one, those back ones, because, um, you know, you never quite know, but, um, you know, he's, he's definitely feeling really good and, um, yeah, I can't wait to uh, Pick get a game. Yeah, there. throw a dart for us. Adelaide or Giants? Uh, it would be one of the two, yeah. Yeah, hopefully Adelaide. Uh, if I had my way and I think his way would probably be Adelaide, but we'll have to wait and see. Good on him. And Jacob Wiedering will be there Friday night? Yeah, he's, uh, he's ready to roll, so it's actually been... I think he's... Re he doesn't like missing games. I think he's enjoyed the time to really refresh, get his body right, and um, he's led really well. So, um, yeah, I'd see him as nearly our most important player in our team, so I can't wait to have him back. So the week I've helped Wiedering and Walsh, no doubt about it. But as a, as a concept of having a buy so early in, in the season, uh, do you like it? Is it difficult to get used to? Or what, what's your initial thoughts? Uh, it was interesting, like, because sometimes you get rhythm and then all of a sudden you get over a little pause. It probably helped our group just from where uh, some of the key players that we yeah. had out. Um, I think in season, um, you know, it, this season's going to keep going longer. I think that there is room for two buys. I think. All, everyone all together? I, I'd love to see two buys come into it. I think seven or eight games, I think that's a, a limit where I reckon guys start to really feel the pinch of the season. And I feel. So everyone have a week off or you, or you spread. Uh, I don't know, like, it depends what they're... I don't know, that's all due to TV rights in terms yeah, of how they yeah. do the buy, but I think I think having seven or eight games, have a week off, let everyone yeah. regroup, refresh and go for the next thing because you get the middle of winter, it can be a grind and you still love playing footy, mm. but um, your body definitely starts to feel it at those stages. The tribunal tonight, so this is unequivocal, it's a four-week suspension for Peter Wright. Is Tom, when, when this moment happens, do you now understand absolutely that this is going to be a suspension and that... If you're right, you just have to find a different way. Yeah, this is a really challenging one because I, I do. Um, I, I, I obviously feel sorry for the Sydney player uh, Harry Cunningham and what he and his family had to go through. But um, you know, if I look at uh, Peter Wright, who plays a similar position, um, I don't think Peter's overly uh, aggressive as a player. Um, so he's gone up to compete. Uh, and had to make a really split decision, uh, sorry, split second decision, to uh, change his approach um, that he's taking into the contest. I think is really hard, but I think now having received four weeks, it, it's it's clear that um, you just have to find a way uh, not to make head contact uh, with a player when you decide to leave the ground. Uh, and, and maybe it's just as simple as that. Um, there will be a little bit adjustment period, I, I feel like, for, for players, because these are hard things to be able to control when you're in the air, when you've made your decision. Um, it, it's, it's sort of uh, almost innate in some players uh, in the way they approach the footy. So there might be a, bit, a little bit of an adjustment period. Um, four weeks, I don't know how I sit on that, um, but... Yeah, I think we've got a bit more of a guideline than what we had a week ago, that's for sure. So there are markers along the way. Yours is actually one of them, Pat. You, you beat it on the... No I know, you beat it at appeal, and then the laws were rewritten. So I guess if, if we took you back to this, is, is what you're required to do now, which is not that... Yeah, well it's, it's, it's the one thing, it's, you always got to play the ball. So, like, with the ball's dead in dispute, the, the guy's always going to go for the ball, if that makes sense. So, I think the, the clear thing for me, um, what I take away from Peter Wright's case is, you know, if he has his arms out as he makes contact, mm. is that a different sort of discussion? Because yep. yep. um, I, I look at that vision and, and 
a bit like what Hawk said, like you take away obviously Harry Cunningham, I know him, great fella, take him like out of the situation. Like if you watch the vision leading up, you can see Peter Wright's eyes are on the ball the whole time. He's intended to mark and obviously last sec split second decision he obviously tries to protect himself which then looks like a bump so we're talking like a marginal seconds here like split second decision so for me watching that it's sort of I think it's clear that if you don't have your arms out um, to got, try and grab the ball um, and you make shoulder um, and head contact mm -hmm. then you're going to get suspended. Patrick good luck on Friday it's great to have you with us. No worries, thanks Jared. And Tommy right. good luck on Monday I hope it's a ripper for you and the family. Good on you thanks guys and all the best Cripper with what's ahead. Thanks, all. Good luck for 350, mate. Well done. Tom.